Welcome back to Sunrise. Time now is 5.12 on your Friday morning. Thank you so much for joining us, and especially if you're going back to school this week. It is so hard to believe yep. that summer is already winding down. Kids are getting ready for back to school if they haven't started already. It's just a little bit depressing. A little. Just a little a bit. Little. Summer We're sorry end. about All that. Right. Well, parents are trying to get those kids back to their normal bedtimes. It's an age-old battle, but Matt McCutcheon joins us this morning with some new tricks to make it just a little bit easier this time around. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. It's really a love-hate relationship, it seems like, for children to get to bed. By the time they actually want to come here, it's usually too late. And all summer long, they've probably been staying up late. So it's really a matter here of the clock. Let's say, for example, your child's been able to stay up as late as they want. Let's say they've been going to bed at 11. But you know that come school time, they need to be in bed by 9 o'clock. So here's what you do. Don't do it right away when Dr. We said. He said to, to cut it back about half an hour every other day. So, for example, tonight, have your child go back to bed at 10.30. Then come Sunday, go back to 10. Keep doing that until you reach that desired bedtime at 9 o'clock. And, of course, when it comes to going to bed, there are certain things you should cut out before your child goes to bed. You can even learn from this as well. Here's the information on your screen right now on what to cut out. This includes things like food, drinks, especially chocolate milk, which may have some hidden caffeine, anything like that. That's what you want to cut out two hours before bedtime. And check this out, exercise. Yeah, that's something else that you actually want to cut out before bedtime, believe it or not. That's because when you're exercising, it's really easy to get all of those sort of endorphins, all that energy running through your body. So you need at least two hours to calm down from that high before bedtime. Sunlight, that's another major thing. You need to cut out two hours before bedtime and then one one hour before bedtime, put the phones, the electronic devices, the iPads, computers, all of that away from your child's reach. And then when it comes to sleep, the big question is how much, right? How much does sleep does my child need? And that really depends on age. One thing you can tell immediately if they're not getting enough sleep is if they appear to be grouchy or grumpy through the day or really seem to be easily agitated. That's a sign they're not getting enough sleep. And again, it really varies by age child who's under six years of age. Most of these children need somewhere around 10 to 11 hours of sleep per night. Um, when you get to the school age, you're generally looking around nine to 10 hours of sleep. And when you get to the adolescent teenage years, you're looking at about eight and a half to nine, nine and a quarter hours of sleep. Also, you want to make sure your bedroom is not too hot. You want to keep it about 10 degrees cooler, a light blanket at the most, especially this time of year, and your pillow. Don't be afraid to replace this. It's a good idea to replace your pillow every year. So those are just a few of the tips. Coming up in our next hour, we're going to talk about why the cell phone is so damaging to your sleep pattern. The answer may just surprise you. That's going to appear in our next hour of Sunrise. But in the meantime, I'm going to take my own advice here and try to get some shut eye myself. All right, Matt, I'm not going to say too much. Cuddle up there. Night-night. Night-night. Good night. <laughs>